It has been a genetically action-packed week here at Samford with critically acclaimed British science writer Kevin Davis on campus for Samford's annual J. Roderick Davis lecture. Davis appeared on campus Thursday, but earlier in the week, students participated in a panel discussion as well as a debate on the ethical issues related to genetics research. Prior to his lecture on Thursday, Davis met with students and discussed various issues in genomics. One particular student has a uniquely personal interest in Davis in his field of study. Born with muscular dystrophy, genetic research is very close to the heart of this Sanford freshman who says she wants to pursue a career in genetics very much like Kevin Davis. I've just been around it all of my life and I just think it's so fascinating, everything that's going on with it and all, the, all of the possibilities in the field of genetics. It was very interesting uh, that he's also he's done research and that he also writes about all the research that's going on and that's exactly what I have interest in. Also before Davis delivered his lecture Thursday night, I talked with him about his book and his visit to Sanford. You're here talking about your book, The Thousand Dollar Genome. That's right. Tell us a little bit about what is in these pages. <laughs> It's a, it's a roller coaster story of uh, advances in DNA sequencing and genomic medicine. So the $1,000 genome is a catchphrase that was coined right after the Human Genome Project, which was pretty much done in about 2000, 2001. Wonderful scientific achievement, but it cost billions of dollars. And scientists recognized, you know, until we got to the level of a $1,000 genome, mm -hmm. all of that wonderful work in genetics wouldn't really make sense or wouldn't have any impact for the man on the street, for you or for me or anybody watching this. So the thousand dollar genome is sort of was a goal, it was okay. an aspiration, it was an idea back then and the point of the book is that now it's becoming reality faster than I think anybody dared dream. So on the one hand you have consumer genomics companies like mm -hmm. 23andMe that are offering you a fascinating glimpse at your genetic makeup, your background, some of the susceptibilities that we have for different diseases, some of the other traits that you carry um, for a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So th that's a really just happened in the last few years. And on the other hand, you have the arrival of new sequencing technologies that really promise to deliver uh, your complete genetic code, your whole genome sequence, your mm -hmm. personal genome project, if you will, in just the next couple of years for about $1,000. Now, obviously, a lot of debate with this as far as positive things, but also some possibly negative things. Talk a little bit about right. the pros and cons of this right. research in genetics. Right. Uh, I see more pros than cons, okay. not surprisingly, given my, my background, but um, you know, I find that uh, getting this genetic information, as have, and I give many examples in the book, um, people have found it empowering in some cases. Okay. They've made you know, uh, radical, uh, life-changing uh, decisions, medical interventions, okay. lifestyle changes. Um, because they learn something about some of the genetic risks that they, they carry. Other people have just found it empowering because they've learned stuff about their family history, some about, something about their ancestry. Um, for adoptees, it gives them insights into their genetic background that they may not have from their, their meager family record. So there's an awful lot of positive things Certainly. to come from it. There are, however, people, particularly in the medical establishment, who think this is dangerous information, mm. that you can't handle the truth, and you really need to have a medical doctor being the filter to kind of help you. Um, I find that a very paternalistic attitude. Okay. Um, and so in the book, I try to you know, show how this, this, if you want this information, I still think you should have access to it, which doesn't mean to say you shouldn't talk to a genetic counselor or your family physician if you then want to take action on something that you've learned about your genetic code. You're talking tonight as part of our yeah. Davis lecture. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what is perhaps maybe one thing that you hope people take away from tonight. If they take one thing away, yeah. what's one thing? Yeah, I, I think they should be excited by this new world of genetic information. And I hope I can sort of get people interested in at least taking a look as to whether this is something that they might want to do. I'm not holding a gun to anybody's head and saying, <laughs> you should get your DNA decoded. Um, but I want people to sort of just see what the options are out there. And even if it's not something that they want to do personally, you know, when you're ready to start having a family, this is technology that is going to impact the health and well-being of your kids and your grandkids um, and pretty much every other person who's going to be born, you know, for the rest of this century and on. So I hope to kind of just make people aware 
of, of, of where this field is going. It's an exciting time. During the day, you're spending some time with students. What has been your time on campus? Talk a little bit about relating with some of the students. What are your impressions? Yeah, I've, I've met with uh, the, the fellows and uh, we'll be meeting with some of the potential grad students uh, later today. I mean, I'm just blown away. I mean, the, the level of, of interest and, and the quality of some of these, uh, some of these kids, um, regardless of whether they're science majors or not, and most of the questions I got this morning were from you know, people studying Spanish and English and uh, somebody who had worked on fruit flies who's now a graphic design major. So, um, you know, and I think that's another important takeaway is that this is not, this is not a technical book, this is not a textbook, um, uh, but you know, we're all interested in our health, we're all, if, if we're all interested in our own well-being and that of our parents and our, and our kids or future kids. Um, and these technologies, I think, are going to have an immense impact on the future of healthcare in this country, and I just hope to you know, raise some awareness of some of those issues. I'm Nathan Troost, Samford University.